So we are here in Milan, which is such a city of paradox, right? You have the old and the new, you know, all wrapped up. When you think about it, what makes a city great, it's really about the great spaces and places. Milan is a great city because of the piazzas and the people coming together. I agree. For me, Milan is also the future. Um, and it's a future uh, in terms of also science and research. I have been abroad for a number of years and I decided to come back to Milan because of the promise of becoming a very, you know, a hot, a hot spot and a hub for international research and, uh, and science and technology. And I have to say that in the last years Milan made significant progress, so I'm very excited about that. People have looked at streets as places to go as fast as possible from point A to point B. But that is not the purpose of streets. And when you think about it, they are the most valuable resource that a city has. And I think what Milan has done under Mayor Sala by turning parking spaces into people spaces, you know, creating over 40 piazzas all across the city, new places for people to gather, creating over 60 kilometers of Strada Aperte, you know, new invitations to people to see their city in a whole new way and improving the quality of life. Uh, I would like to make an analogy to the cell and uh, also in cells, just to make a bit of a joke, we don't have only cars, so single motors that move individual cargos, but we have also trains. We have molecular trains that my lab studies for a number of years that allow the transport of several cargos, different cargos up and down and structure of the cell that is called the cilium. It's a, a protrusion of the cell that we use to sense the external environment and to move cells around. So we have these molecular trains that can move hundreds of different proteins. And this, I find this is a wonder because it's that. a similar, very similar system that we have in, uh, for train transport where we have so many different uh, people uh, jumping on a train, but also different cargos that can be moved uh, between cities even. We did a lot of work with pilot interventions, you know, trying different kinds of treatments, almost like a pilot treatment, right? And so we showed people what was possible at a very granular level, right? Like we actually took a, our first project, taking an underutilized parking lot in Brooklyn and turning it into Piazza almost overnight. We literally painted it, put little planters and stones and showed what was possible right in front of their door. Showing what's possible, you know, doesn't have to take years or billions of euros, you know? It can start with something as simple as paint on a street. So what you said is that you had to show the people that the space that you were changing was changing in the right direction. And this is what happened in our cells all the time. So there are changes that happen and then cause other changes. They are called signaling cascades. And so signaling cascades are fundamental for communication and also for things to happen inside the cell like it happens in Among Us. When you invite communities to participate, you know, they have the wisdom of the street. They know what's needed. It's always interesting when you see like uh, a path that's created from people walking frequently on it, right? You can see the desire lines of the city. You can see the city that wants to be. So people really almost design the city with their footsteps. So they were the ones that were driving the change because so much of the wisdom of a city resides in its communities. Another very important thing of communities, I think, is diversity. So when you are able to have different uh, cultures, for example, in a city, they merge together. This always brings new emerging properties, right, of, of the city itself and the community itself. It's the same thing that happens in an ecosystem. Uh, and we are part of an ecosystem, right? That is the city, but we are part even of a bigger ecosystem. Sometimes we forget about that. But in nature, um, you know, when you speak about a forest, a forest is not just an ensemble of uh, trees and plants. There is a world behind that 
and there is a, such a huge community and uh, communication is, uh, is a fundamental thing, not only between humans, but also between animals and plants and fungi systems. and systems. <laughs> What my team does is that we do cellular and molecular structural research. So we use fancy microscope in order to look at the molecular structure of proteins and molecular complexes in the context of the cells, mm. which is not directly maybe linked to applications, but uh, it's fundamental in order to understand life and in order to understand how life works at different scales, from the molecular scale to the ecosystems. That's so interesting because um, I work for a mayor, Mike Bloomberg, in New York City. People for years thought there was nothing you could do about traffic crashes. We looked at where the crashes happened. Who, what, where, when, why these traffic crashes did. The largest study ever done in the United States. When we put down protected bike lanes on 9th Avenue, the first ever, we saw business sales go up by 49%. When we put down our rapid bus lines, we saw bus speeds go up by almost 20%, more passengers, 15%. You know, we met, looked at the data to see what was happening. I think the data is key part of telling the story about the impact of these changes. I think what resonates with people um, in cities is the quality of life that's here. You know, is it easy to enjoy everything that a city has to offer? You shouldn't have to live outside of a city to enjoy open space. You shouldn't have to wait 30, 40 minutes for a bus to be able to get across town. That is so important. I think Mayor Sala has done a great job of actually focusing on that. And it's more than just concrete asphalt and steel, right? It's how do we use the, the space and how do we, use the DNA of a city so that it is actually attractive places for people to be. I think that's, that's really important and it must be a challenge though because Milano is indeed a big city. I knew Milano many years ago when I was coming here when I was a teenager for fencing retreats and I didn't like it so much because it was too great. There was, uh, I felt that it was a, there were not enough spaces to, um, you know, not environments to just hang out on the street or on the piazza or on the square. And uh, I come from a city like Siena, which is a tiny city where we have this beautiful uh, square where people just go there and enjoy life, right? So I have to say Milano changed dramatically since then. I like it very much. It's a place where I, you know, I think about going out and, and relaxing in yeah. the city. So that's a big achievement. It's a big achievement. It's not a yeah, dangerous uh, place where you just pass by and then you go back to your home, but you can, you know, just play on the street. It resonates whether it's you resonates. know it or not. Yeah, exactly. If, you can, if kids can play on the streets, so that's a major achievement. Exactly. Think.